Guardian <coughs> comes on stage going, Guardian of the Wells. Where do I start with that? Bro, can't. Nah. <laughs> Too obvious. Uh, what, we're all there? kind of bogged Bad. down with the Guardian of the Wells. The stories go around. You've probably heard one of uh, one of the favourites, and I'm not going to bore you with that. Because I'm going to be honest, we don't do sky-clad nymphs <laughs> hanging around a well <laughs> waiting for someone to come and maltreat them in Scotland. Have you met Scottish women? <laughs> <laughs> cold out there, and I'm damned. Keep my language. If I'm going to hang around, a, uh, hang around a, a well, scantily clad, trying to protect it, waiting for rampaging knights to come and, you know, have ideas. <laughs> no. In Scotland, we don't do lassies hanging around well. Our well guardians are far more interesting than that. We have trout. <laughs> and uh, there's a salmon. <laughs> We also tend to favour the Urisk, who was, if you like, the kind of 15th century hairy environmentalist. <laughs> um, very, very prone to rampaging around the countryside and having a wee word with anyone if they messed around as well. Um, so I'm going to tell you probably what is the most Scottish story I have ever told in my professional life about a very Scottish guardian of the well. It kind of started when I went to this well, this is St Ferguson in Glams, and I followed a bird, and that robin sat just above that ivy and sat and sang in this beautiful song. And I started to think about Scottish well guardians. But we don't start off with a robin. We start off with a promise you a really Scottish story with two men called Jock. <laughs> <laughs> two brothers called Jock. Now don't ask. All I can assume is that either we Jock was the seventh son of the seventh son and his mum and dad had purely run out of ideas by the time we Jock came along and they went, we're all calling him Colin Douglas, Nigel, Jock. What was the Colin Douglas, Nigel Jock, you, whatever your name is, you be wee Jock, then we won't have. Or, my other notion here, is that Big Jock <coughs> was such a noisy baby, he never slept, that by the time wee Jock was born, his parents had totally lost any imagination whatsoever. <laughs> and they thought, I can't think of any more children's names, heaven help me. We'll call him Jock as well. So we'll start off with our two brothers called Jock. Now, one day, Big Jock goes up to his mum and he says, I've decided to go travelling. And his mum goes, all right, son, OK, fair enough. Well, tell you what, if you go to the well and fetch me some water, I'll make you a bannock. See, I told you it was going to be Scottish. It's got bannocks in it too. It's going to get better. Um, if you bring me back a lot of water, I'll make you a big bannock. But if you only bring me back a little bit of water, I'll make you a wee bannock. And with that in mind, she gave him a sieve and a dish and sent him <laughs> down to the well. Now, Big Jock gets down to the well and a little bird catches his eye with a robin, just sat on the ivy at the very top of the well. And the robin says to him, pack it with moss, Clag it with clay, and you'll take much more water away. And Jock goes, excuse me, what, you're a speaking bird? <laughs> Don't you be telling me what to do. <laughs> and so he puts a bit of water into his wee dish, and he carefully takes it back to his mum, who makes him a wee bannock and sends him on his way. Now he walks far, far, farther than you and I can imagine. And on his way, he meets that little bird again. And the little bird looks at him and he says, Can I have a bit of your bannock? And Jock says to him, No! It's your fault, you stupid wee bird, that I've only got a wee bannock. I'm hungry. You're not having any of my bannock. 
and the wee bird goes, go on, if you give me a crumb, I'll give you a feather out of my wing, and you can make a set of bagpipes. See, told you. Um, <laughs> and Big Chop goes, no, no, I am not sharing my bannock with you. Go on, be done. So off he goes, further onwards and onwards, with just a wee bannock. So he comes to the home of the king. He knocks on the door, housekeeper opens it and he says, can I have a job? And the housekeeper says, well what can you do? And he goes, I can sweep floors, put out ashes and I'm not bad at herding cows. And the housekeeper goes, mm. well you're like with hares. And the job goes, uh, I don't know, why? And the housekeeper says, because the king has said, if anyone can herd his hairs, <laughs> now there's a job description for you, <laughs> if anyone can herd his hairs and make sure they all come back safe and sound at the end of the day, they can have the hand of the princess in marriage. Mm. I know. <laughs> and Chuck goes, well, I've never herded hairs before, but I'll give it a go. Next day, <laughs> out he goes, 24 hairs. And one with a withered leg that can barely move. And there's Big Jock with his wee bannock. And he's so hungry that he decides <laughs> to roast the crippled hare <laughs> and eat it. And at which point the other 24 do one. <laughs> and they all exit rapidly, stage left. Quite sensible, really. You know. Off Big Jock goes back to the palace. Don't ask why I didn't write her. <laughs> and the king promptly has him hanged. Back at home, Wee Jock decides he's going to go on his travels. And his mum says to him, Go and get me some water from the well, and I'll make you a bannock. If you bring me back a wee bit of water, I'll make you a wee bannock. And if you bring me some a lot of water, I'll get you a bit. Panic. And so Jock takes his dish and his sieve, and you know how it goes. When he gets to the well, there's a flutter of wings and a chirrup from the ivy, and a little robin says to him, Pack it with moss and clag it with clay, and you'll carry more water away. And we Jock minds the bag, and he coats the sieve with moss, and he packs it out with clay and he takes his mum home a big, big pool of water and she bakes him a huge bannock. Off he goes on his travels and on the way there's a flutter of wings and a chirrup from a tree and the little robin says, if you give me a crumb from your bannock I'll give you a feather <coughs> in my wing for you to make a set of bagpipes. <laughs> And Wee Jock goes, oh, of course I will, because you help me, little bird. Here, you have some bannock. And he feeds the little bird. <coughs> and the little bird says, take a <coughs> wing feather from me. And Jock goes, I can't do that, I'll hurt you. And the bird goes, no, no, trust me, take a feather. So Jock takes the feather as gently as he can, and he makes a set of bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes on his travels far and far and farther than you and I can imagine until he comes to a castle and he knocks at the door and the housekeeper says uh huh right what can I do for you and he says can I job and she says what can you do and he says well I can a uh, sweep floors clean up ashes herd cows and I'm quite good at listening to folk. <laughs> <laughs> and the housekeeper says, well, it's funny as you say that, but then um, we're short of a hair herder. <laughs> Are you any good at herding hairs? And he goes, uh, no. Uh, she says, I'll give it a try. She says, well, I'll tell you what, if you succeed and you bring all the hairs safely back, then the king has said you can marry the princess. And we jock. I'm sure in my mind he's going, really? I don't know, I've not met the princess, what's she like? I don't know, like but you know, that, there's a story, we don't know yet. Um, next morning, out he goes, 
four and twenty hairs, and one with a poor wee withered leg. But wee Jock takes them out, and he plays his bagpipes, and the hairs all dance in a circle, around and about. And at the end of the day, they follow him back. And when the one with the withered leg can't walk anymore, he picks it up in his arms and carries it back to the king's palace. Well, of course, he gets to marry the princess and everyone lives happily ever after. <laughs> and that, for me, is just one of the stories that it depends on how you hear it, it depends on how you listen. For me, that tells you you've got to look after those treasured spaces. That moss is important. You know, some of you will know I'm a her I started off with plants are my thing and I'm diversifying into water and wells. But you know, we don't have plants if you don't have a well. Um, those of you that have read Mary Beth, Mary Beth's healing threads will know that she starts off talking about herbs and then ends up banging on about clay and wells. And it seems to be the Scottish curse. But, um, <laughs> but that for me is a story that just reminds you to look after those treasured places. And so that's my well story, the most Scottish story I've ever told. Two jocks, bagpipes and a banner. <laughs> <laughs>